Rejected in Nazareth. In our series through the Bible, this is the first time that I mention synagogues. Synagogues are a very important part of all the stories from here on out in the Bible. And so uh, let's take a few minutes to talk about them. First of all, to understand that the whole concept of synagogues actually comes up after the temple is destroyed. When the people goes in, when the people go into exile, they 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 need a place to worship. So they established it that for every ten to twelve families, they could start they could start building a synagogue. Now it was used for several reasons. Obviously, the first one was for them to worship, although they could not sacrifice animals there. It was only for a place of reading the the, the scripture. In prayer. Secondly, the synagogue was used for teaching young boys. The rabbi could could teach the young men, teach them to read so they could read the scripture, teach them to write so they could communicate, and teach them to memorize so they could memorize huge passages, the entire book of Proverbs and most of the Old Testament law. But it was also a place where they could meet together socially. It was kind of the center of the Jewish community. A place where they would meet if there was some crisis going on or where they had to discuss some edict coming down from the king or something. It was a place where they could get together. But it was also, in, in, in this social aspect, it was a, well, it was a place of business, not not the uh, carrying on of business, but the, the networking. They obviously wanted to work with one another. They wanted to buy and sell among f- fellow Jews, members of their, own, of their own synagogue. So, with this in mind, you can see why being cast out of the synagogue was, was a devastating thing. You, first of all, lost your place of worship. Your children couldn't be educated there anymore. And you'd lose all of your business connections. In many ways, that's why the early Christians were were suffering. There was a famine in the land, but oftentimes just being kicked out of the synagogue meant that they had to start over again. And and, and so the local churches became, became the substitute. And... Actually, the synagogue was the model used for early churches coming down to this day. The synagogue would have one leader, and the leader would have an assistant, but the leader then could ask a visiting rabbi to read the scripture and teach. And and the way that was done, the rabbi would stand along with all, all, all the people, the scripture would be handed to him because they had a particular scripture that was read for each week. And so the weekly scripture would be handed to the, the, the scroll, the, the, and, the, and the rabbi would read the scripture. And he would know that this was going to come because this is the Sunday for that scripture. So when they went to Isaiah, that was the scripture that, that was used. And then after he was done, he would hand it back to the attendant. And then the teacher would sit down. Everyone else would, would remain standing. At that point, the teacher could teach. It's the opposite of churches today, where the speaker stands and everyone, and everyone else sits down. No, it, it was the opposite. The teacher sat. Uh, as I mentioned, visiting rabbis, that's why wherever uh, uh, Paul went throughout the Roman Empire, the, the, the local synagogue would have him come in and teach. He would read the scripture and teach. Uh, he was not only a rabbi, he was a Pharisee. And he had news. He had come from Judah, so he had news of things that were, that were going on. And they would want to hear, hear that too. When Jesus reads the scripture, he comes to a sentence and he stops mid-sentence. 
Everyone's waiting for the rest of the passage, but he reads the first part, comes to a sentence, and comes in the middle of the sentence and stops. Rolls it up and hands it back and sits down and says, this has been fulfilled today. Today it is fulfilled. Basically, this is when he, for the first time, where he declares, I'm the Messiah. Now, the sentence, the, 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 the passage, the, the first part up to where he stops refers to the Messiah's first coming. From the middle of that sentence on refers to his second coming. So that's why he stops right there. Now the people have a reaction. But they react in two ways. When Jesus indicates, I'm the Messiah, it generates questions. They, they, they don't get enraged at this point. They ask, well, isn't this the son of Joseph? Isn't Mary still here with us and his brothers and, and his sisters? It brings up questions. They, they, they want to know. They want to see some miracles. They, see, they want to see some proof. But then they have a second reaction. Because Jesus goes on and he indicates that, that, um, that sometimes God will bless Gentiles over Jews. Oh, that... That doesn't generate questions. That generates rage that, that Gentiles could be blessed of God over Jews. Uh, these, these people hated Gentiles. Gentiles represented uh, the Assyrians that came in and tortured the people. The, the, the Babylonians which came and the Greeks that came through. And now the Romans, the, the city of Nazareth actually had a garrison of Roman soldiers. And they, and they were cruel. And so they hated Gentiles. And that God would bless... Gentiles were considered dogs. God would bless these dogs over God's people. But then Jesus also... He quit, uh, made the people in Nazareth not to be like Jews from Judah in the south. He's referring to the Old Testament Israelites, people from the northern ten tribes, the wicked ones, they, the ones that, that the Jews all knew, uh, uh, deserted God, worshipped idols, uh, the, the two golden calves and Baal. Jesus was saying, you're like the Israelites. Because he's talking about Elijah and, and Elisha and the Israelites. Uh, no, they, were, they, were, they had a lot to be, to be upset about. So they grabbed him, going to take him out of the place to, to throw him off and, and, and to stone him. And at that point, Jesus does what they asked for. They wanted to see a miracle. So he performs one. They had grabbed him. They were hauling him out of the city. And he simply stops without them knowing. Turns around without them knowing. And walks away. They get all the way out there thinking that they had him. Think about the poor guy that they, that they actually did have. <laughs> and, uh, and wait, wait, wait. I, I'm not the one. I, I'm with you. And they looked around and Jesus is gone. Jesus left the city, never to return. But we want you to return next week when we continue on with more insights on the story of the week. We'll see you next week.